good morning i extend a warm welcome to you all to the worship service fifth sunday after trinity let us begin our worship service by singing the hymn holy 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 lord god almighty hymn number 286 286 Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God is love, and we are God's children. There is no room for fear in love. We love because God loved us first. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith. God our Father, we confess to you and to our fellow members in the body of Christ that we have sinned in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry. Forgive us our sins and deliver us from the power of evil for the sake of your Son who died for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. God, who is both power and love, Forgive us and free us from our sins. Heal and strengthen us by God's Spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, you have prepared for those who love you good things no eye has seen. Pour in your hearts such love of you that by loving you in all things and above all things, we may be worthy of your promises, which surpass all we can desire. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Now let us listen to the word of God. The Old Testament reading is taken from Genesis chapter 25 
starting at the 19th verse. These are the descendants of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, daughter of Bethuel, the Aramean of Paddan Aram, sister of Liban, the Aramean. Isaac prayed to the Lord for his wife because she was barren, and the Lord granted his prayer, and his wife Rebekah conceived. The children struggled together within her, and she said, If it is to be this way, why do I live? So she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples born of you shall be divided. One shall be stronger than the other. The elder shall serve the younger. When her time to give birth was at hand, there were twins in her womb. The first came out red, all his body like a hairy mantle, so they named him Esau. Afterwards his brother came out, with his hand gripping Esau's heel, so he was named Jacob. Isaac was sixty years old when she bore him. When the boys grew up, Esau was a skilful hunter, a man of the field, while Jacob was a quiet man, living in tents. Isaac loved Esau because he was fond of game, but Rebecca loved Jacob. Once when Jacob was cooking a stew, Esau came in from the field and he was famished. Esau said to Jacob, let me eat some of that red stuff, for I am famished. Therefore he was called Edom. Jacob said, First sell me your birthright. Esau said, I am about to die. Of what use is a birthright to me? Jacob said, Swear to me first. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew. And he ate and drank, and rose and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. This is the word of the Lord. The psalm this morning is Psalm 119, verses 105 to 112. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I have sworn and confirmed that I will keep your righteous judgments. I am afflicted very much. Revive me, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, I pray, the free will offerings of my mouth, O Lord, and teach me your judgments. My life is continually in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I have not strayed from your precepts. Your testimonies I have taken as a heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. I have inclined my heart to perform your statutes forever to the very end. Praise the Lord. A reading from Romans chapter 8, verses 12 to 25. Brothers, we have an obligation, but it is not to the sinful nature to live according to it. For if you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, 
if indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. The creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in the hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning, as in the pains of childbirth, right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption as sons the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what he already has? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew chapter 13 verses from 1 to 9 and 18 to 23. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the lake. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on a rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the chaos of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, 
and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields. In one case, a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. A church was celebrating its 150th anniversary of its consecration. The vestry members decided to organize a special service. They invited their bishop to deliver a sermon, and the bishop warmly accepted their request. The bishop prepared a sermon which was a perfect combination of anecdotes, symbolism, and deep theology. On the day of their special service, the church was crowded with people. The church members celebrated joyously and they sang hymns energetically and the bishop delivered a beautiful sermon. After the service, the bishop stood at the back of the church greeting people. While he was greeting people, two people stuck in his memory. First was a lady who came to church every Sunday and sat faithfully in the front row. She approached the bishop and said, Bishop, through your, throughout your sermon, I was trying to work it out, something I could not grasp. <coughs> but then it hit me. The bishop was filled with joy and he thought that the woman would have followed his sermon completely. The woman said, Something is different about you. You have got new glasses, haven't you? The bishop's heart sank. But then he got talking to another man close by. He said to him, Bishop, I stopped coming to this church years ago when I was a teenager. I never really thought it was my thing. But I thought I would come today because everybody else seemed to be coming. Bishop, what you said today that spoke to me, I think, if I, if I am honest, I would never really listen before. But now I think I could really put some roots down here in this place again. Jesus' message and teachings are still a challenge for us today. When we listen to the gospel of Jesus, we make our life very special because the Word of God nurtures our life and strengthens our souls to overcome all difficulties that we are encountering in our everyday life. In today's gospel passage, we see a beautiful parable of the sower, which reveals the fullness of life and it assures us that the harvest will come in spite of the many obstacles that stand in the way. In our present situation of COVID-19 pandemic, this parable gives us enormous strength and confidence to overcome this present fearful situation energetically and creatively. The parable of the sower can be found in the Gospel of Matthew, Mark and Luke. While there are some wording differences in the three different versions, all of them make the same points. In today's gospel passage, we see that Jesus told this parable to a large crowd and did not offer any interpretation at the time. Later, his disciples asked a question regarding this parable. I imagine the people who were listening to this parable could easily visualize the scene. They would have either seen or participated in su such activities numerous times. Most Palestinian Jews, like most other Mediterranean people of the time, resided in agrarian villages and towns and they were involved in agriculture. The farmer would sling a bag of seed around his neck and shoulders. The bag of seed will be positioned in front of him. He would walk through the field, reaching into the bag at regular intervals 
taking out a handful of seeds and broadcasting it as evenly as he could throughout the field. In the Old Testament, we can see two methods of sowing used within Palestine. In some cases, farmers plowed their fields, sowed their seeds, and then plowed a second time to cover the seed. In other instances, farmers sowed their seed on hard, unplowed ground, and then plowed the field. In this parable, the main focus is on the different types of soil, hard, rocky, thorn bush, and the wood. It also explains the plants which grew from the seeds sown in the good soil. Let us read this parable once again to understand clearly. A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose they were scorched and since they had no root they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, Psalm 30. At the end of this parable, we see the seeds which were thrown in the pathway, rocky ground, and the thorn bush could not grow and survive in the midst of all obstacles. But the seeds that fell on good ground yielded a fruitful harvest. For a Palestinian farmer, getting hundredfold, sixtyfold, and thirty is a tremendous harvest because the average harvest in this region was seven and a, seven and a half to tenfold. Here a pessimist can argue that the farmer in this parable wasted three quarters of the seed. But we must know that Jesus gave this parable at that time when the message of the good news was being rejected by a large population during Jesus' public ministry. God's message will always fall onto unpromising and promising ground. God reminds us that some seeds will always land in the right place and at the right time. And under the right conditions, it will successfully put down deep roots in somebody's heart and the effort will always be worthwhile. God sows the seeds of his kingdom in the hearts of human beings. God is the farmer and we are the soil. He sows his words in our hearts. When we start cultivation, we begin with making fertile soil where seed can grow sprout, grow and blossom and bear fruits as we desire. Like that, God makes us fertile soil where his words sprout, grow and blossom and bear fruits as God desires. He nurtures us. He waters us. He gives us the capacity to be the best soil. What must be our contribution towards this activity of God's word? Answer is very simple. We just surrender to our God, the great farmer. Let him do it with it, whatever he wants. Let him plow, let him cultivate, let him till it, let him water it at his time and in his seasons. We his children are transformed into a fertile ground by his sacramental actions. Let his word fall onto our hearts so that we may live in peace. In today's first reading, we see that two brothers, Esau and Jacob, responded to the tree of blessing badly. Through their action, they polluted the fertile land of brotherhood. They brought an unfair practice into their family relationship. We see there 
a Salem birthright. The story reminds us that family is a fertile soil where relationship must grow in love and it should not be kept for sale. All members in a family are equally responsible for making fertile soil sustainably to maintain better harvest. Our hearts and fa families are the grounds and they are created by God to produce tremendous fruit when his word is sold. Just as a seed has to remain in the ground over time to germinate, so the word of God has to abide in us. John chapter 15 verse 7 says that, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. Jesus wants us to keep his word in our hearts and in our actions. If our hearts are rich enough, our faith in God will grow strongly. When the wind blows, our heart will stand firmly. Therefore, let us add extra spiritual nutrients such as love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control in our hearts. If we can add these spiritual ingredients in our life, then God's word will be a lamp to our food and a light to our path. Amen. Let us pray. Right, it's now time for our in intercessional prayers. So let us just have a couple of seconds to still our minds and think of all the great things, the good things that have happened for us. Lord God, after months of restrictions to the way of living we're accustomed to, we give thanks as the journey back to a more normal lifestyle begins. We pray that all who are tasked with the work of creating the framework for the process are guided and strengthened by you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, our congregations look forward to a time when we can worship together in our churches. We offer our heartfelt thanks for the ministry of the Reverend Paul. We pray for the clergy throughout the world who bring us your teaching and pray especially for our Bishop Kevin as he begins his role in Glasgow and Galloway Diocese. And we pray for Mark, our Primus, for his strong leadership. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of all creation, as harvest time approaches, we give thanks for the work of farmers and the food industry. Let us pray that our food producers bring in a bountiful harvest so that all may be fed. At this time we think especially of those farmers facing challenges of locust swarms to their harvests in East Africa. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of wisdom, we have learned how important so many people performing a multitude of jobs are to beat the coronavirus. We acknowledge and give thanks for all those working for the benefit of our society. Aware of the impact of rapid change, we pray for all those whose jobs are at risk or who have found their jobs redundant. Through your love, support job seekers and their families as they seek new employment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we offer our prayers for June Farkerson, Anne Fairn and Elizabeth Wilderspin along with those known to us who may be troubled in body, mind or spirit. Lord, please restore them through your healing touch and bring them improved health. We pray also for those people whose treatments have been delayed. May they take comfort from your love during these difficult times. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
We meet in Christ's name. Let us share his peace. The peace of the Lord be with you. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Worship and praise belong to you, Father, in every place and at all times. All power is yours. You created the heavens and established the earth. You sustain in being all that is. In Christ, your Son, our life, and yours are brought together in a wonderful exchange. He made his home among us that we might forever dwell in you. Through your Holy Spirit, you call us to new birth in a creation restored by love. As children of your redeeming purpose, we offer you our praise. With angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, singing the hymn of your unending glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and thanksgiving be to you, most loving Father, for the gift of your Son, born in human flesh. He is the Word existing beyond time, both source and final purpose, bringing to oneness all that is made. Obedient to your will, he died upon the cross. By your power, you raised him from the dead. He brought the bonds of evil and set your people free to be his body in the world. On the night when he was given up to death, Knowing that his hour had come, having loved his own, he loved them to the end. At supper with his disciples, he took bread and offered you thanks. He brought the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, it is broken for you. After supper, he took the cup, he offered you thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all, that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. We now obey your son's command. We recall his blessed passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom, made one with him. We offer you these gifts, and with them ourselves, a single, holy, living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, send your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon this bread and this wine, that overshadowed by his life-giving power, there may be the body and blood of your Son, and we may be kindled with the fire of your love, and renewed for the service of your kingdom. Help us, who are baptized into the fellowship of Christ's body, to live and work to your praise and glory. May we grow together in unity and love, until at last, in your new creation, we enter into our heritage in the company of the Virgin Mary, the Apostles and Prophets, and of all our brothers and sisters, living and departed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be to you, Lord of all ages, world without end. Amen. The living bread is broken for the life of the world. Lord, 
unite us in this sign. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. How mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. How mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is gracious, and His mercy endures forever. Let us pray. Father, we have broken the bread which is Christ's body. We have tasted the wine of His new life. We thank you for these gifts by which we are made one in Him and drawn into that new creation which is your will for all humankind. Through Him who died for us, and rose again, your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us receive God's blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.